Hi, this video is on domain and range, and we're going to be practicing uh, finding domain and range of relations using interval notation. We're also going to go a little bit into set builder notation so that um, in case, depending on what your homework or uh, your instructor is asking of you for a test or whatever, um, you know each one and how to convert between the two. So um, that's what we're going to be looking at in this video. You're going to be using interval notation, not only for domain and range, but you're going to be using it um, throughout the course. So if you're studying college algebra, then it's something that you're going to be seeing over and over and over again. So before we get into using it, I just want to kind of explain the symbolism behind it. Mathematics kind of has its own little language. We have our own symbols. and Basically, if you can learn the symbols and the meaning behind them, then you will be able to read mathematics and not only read mathematics, but communicate to others um, about solutions or stuff like that. So interval notation is used for continuous functions or yeah, continuous functions. And we've already kind of looked at in a previous video domain and range with discrete functions. So a discrete function, I'll scroll back and show you, hopefully I don't make you dizzy. Discrete functions were like, um, let me find, sorry, I'm on the wrong page. Like these, where we have distinct values. So we have these separate set of points. And if we were to graph them on a coordinate plane, they would be separate points that we can easily see. Same thing here. We have one, two, three, four separate points. These are discrete functions. So interval notation is actually used for continuous functions. And a continuous function has an infinite amount of points. We could never list them. We would be here forever if we tried to list them. So a discrete function means distinct values. For example, if we did domain and it had one, three, five, seven, you can kind of envision that as like um, if you're in a classroom and your set of values is maybe the students in the classroom, that's going to be discrete because there are separate bodies and each human body counts as a value in the function. So, um, or TVs in your house or dogs walking around while I'm making this video. <laughs> Those are uh, discrete values. I have two dogs. One is sleeping and snoring and one is walking around. So you probably hear that if you do, I'm sorry. And then a continuous function means all real possible values between two points. So I think on here, yeah, this was actually not a function. It is a relation, but not a function, but it's a continuous relation. So it has an infinite amount of points that makes up this picture. It makes up this graph. I could tell you there's all these points and I'm not even touching them all. It looks like I am, but I'm not. There's all these points on there that makes it this continuous thing or like in a linear function, it has all these points along this line that form this line. Now in a linear function, you only need two distinct points to actually get the picture of it, but there are far more than two points on the line. There's an infinite amount of points and we call that continuous. Go back here, sorry, I will stop going back and forth. Sorry about that, I don't wanna make you dizzy. And interval notation is basically a sentence. And the sentence is telling you something. It's telling you what the function um, is, the x values that the x function is covering and the x values that the function can equal and cannot equal. And basically it's built off of um, or related to set builder notation. And set builder notation uses inequalities to write these statements or write these inequalities, um, relationships, write these relationships. So if you are given a graph and you have a closed circle, 
then the symbol associated with a closed circle is a less than or equal to or a greater than or equal to. It doesn't matter specifically in this case uh, which one it will in the problem depending, but for what we're talking about now, it doesn't matter. What, what makes it a closed circle is that equal to, that bar underneath means that um, the this value is, or the, <laughs> can't think of the word, it's equal to this value. This value is part of the domain or range or whatever we're talking about. And then the other one below it, less than or greater than, it does not have that bar underneath. So we would use an open circle because it means that maybe the function goes up really, 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 really close to that value, but not equal to. So like if it were a two, if we were an open circle on two, it would mean we can go all the way up to 1.9 or 1.99 or 1.999, whatever, um, but not equal to two. And we'll get, we'll dive more deeply into that as we study more functions. Right now, we're just kind of getting used to the notation. So interval notation for the first case where we have that equal to or that closed circle is uh, we're going to use these brackets. Whenever you see a bracket in interval notation, that means that you can equal that number. And then whenever you see a parentheses, that means that you cannot equal that number. It can get really close to that number, but not equal to it. And uh, you'll see down further, I'll show further, I'll show you an example. Anytime you're using infinity, we're going to use a parentheses because infinity is not a number, it's a concept and you can't equal a concept. So I'll show you an example. Don't worry. So set builder notation, it, it's kind of like it seems you're building this set. So if I were to use set builder notation for this graph down here, this number line, what you do is you have a set you use those little braces, little curly braces. You name the variable that you're using. I'm going to say X. Such that, and that long bar means such that X is in between negative two and I think that's a five, five. So I'm building it, I'm building the pieces. X is less than or equal to five. And I said less than or equal to because it is a closed circle, but it is greater than negative two. And I used greater than because it is an open circle. And then I close my set. So that's set builder notation. And you probably will see it but I think that interval notation is a little more common. So interval notation, I feel like is also a little bit easier. We've got an open circle here on negative two, and then it's shaded up until five with a closed circle. And that's it, that's interval notation. But it seems simple, but this little, thing right here is telling you a lot. It's a sentence. It's communicating something. We're saying that our x values uh, get really, really close to negative two, but not equal to it. And then they go all the way up until five and they can equal five. So that's what it's saying. It kind of forms the relationship of these, um, of this graph <laughs> number line, shading on the number line. And um, it, it does, it does matter which symbols you're using here. Okay, so this next one, I'm just gonna use interval notation to start and then I'll, I'll do set builder. But uh, this, the left arrow, it's pointing to the left, is considered negative infinity. Now these numbers are not negative, but if we were to extend the number line, it would extend into negative infinity. And you'll see I used a parentheses on it because you can't equal infinity. It goes up to three with an open circle. It's on the tick mark, so it kind of looks like a smiley face, but it's actually an open circle. And then we have this break in the graph. We'll use this symbol, it's a U, it means union, which is the symbol for or. And then we have a closed circle on six, 
And that shading extends into positive infinity. And then we use a parentheses. So that's interval notation. And remember this U is indicating that there is a break in the graph. If I were to use set builder notation, I'm gonna say X such that X is less than three or we're not a room, X is greater than or equal to six. So you kind of, it's kind of more, um, you're using your words a little bit more and then you're using the inequalities to express the relationship. So we have this little piece over here on the left side that's representing less than three, or we have this little piece over on the right side representing greater than or equal to six. And these mean the exact same thing. So every representation should communicate the same message. All right, so we have down here a couple examples. We're gonna do domain and range of these relations or functions. Uh, I called them functions, I think. Graphs, I called them graphs. <laughs> Safe play. In this first example, if you have these notes, I want you to go ahead and fill in this circle just for the sake of confusion. Um, it gets confusing when we do range. So just to kind of make it simpler for this, the sake of the lesson, let's fill that in. Let's make it a closed circle. And there's really two ways, uh, maybe more than two ways, but two ways I'm gonna show you how you can figure out the domain and range of these graphs. Remember that domain is associated with X. So we're just gonna be looking at the X axis for this part of the problem. And the X axis, basically we have graph from this point to this point. And I kind of picture it as like, there's this box. I wanna say range, but range gets confusing because range is referring to the Y values, but there's this area that's covered by this drawing on our graph. And that area that's covered is kind of this box. And the box extends from negative five to three on the X axis. And I use brackets because we're using, uh, we have closed circles, so we can equal those values. The other way you can look at it is you're using the far left point, which is negative five, two, over to the far right point, which is three, two. And you can see from those points, the farthest points on each side, the boundaries, that the X values are negative five and three. And so those are forming your end points on your interval notation. So if you don't like the box that I drew, then you can label the points instead. And that gives you the boundaries of your interval notation for your domain and range. Which means that the range, which is Y, goes from, hmm, I'm gonna correct myself here. The lowest point on the X axis is zero. Oh, sorry, wrong. Um, looks like negative one, zero. I don't know, I'm just kind of guessing the X value because it doesn't matter. I'm talking about range, so the X value doesn't really matter. Um, so the lowest Y value that is graphed is zero. And the highest Y value that is graphed is two. My bracket got a little funny, let me fix it. And so if you're writing points, that's how you can see that. Or if you're using that box method, like I like to do, this is the highest point on the Y axis, and this is the lowest point on the Y axis. So when we're talking about range, we're just looking at the Y axis. So what, where is their graph on the coordinate plane that cover, that's covered on the Y values? So this Y value is associated with two, this Y value is associated with zero. And that's it, that's all it's asking for. And then um, the brackets mean that it is equal to. Since we have a solid line here, we use the bracket. If it had been a dotted line, dotted line then we would use a parentheses. Okay, this next one's, I feel like a little bit easier. 
I don't know why. I think the U anyway. Um, so we can draw our little box of possible area where it is graphed. So the domain goes from negative four to three. And then pause it and see if you can um, get the correct symbolism for the interval notation, whether you're using parentheses or brackets. So pause it, try it, come back. You should have gotten a parentheses here and a bracket here. And then the range, if you wanna pause it and try it on your own and then come back, please do that. We should have negative five to negative three, parentheses on the negative five, bracket on the negative three. And the reason for that is because this is an open circle, so we use the parentheses, and this is a closed circle, so we use the bracket. Now again, if you had chosen instead to label your points, and that kind of forms your endpoints of your interval notation, then that's how you would do that. And you can see the x values, and you can see the y values. So not too bad. And then this last one, we have some uh, discontinuity in the graph. So we're gonna have some breaks in the graph. And just like we did up here, anywhere there's a break in the graph, you're gonna use that union symbol, which means or, means there's a break. So this, if I'm just talking about domain and I were to look at this piece, let's just focus on this piece for now. This little arrow indicates that it continues going down forever and ever. Now, all we can see is the graph that's on the paper, but it actually keeps going. And these X values are basically mapped up to the X axis. And if we were to continue mapping up those values, they go on into negative infinity on the X axis. And then it stops at negative one, open circle. And then there's a jump in the graph and those values go from negative one to four. And then there's another jump in the graph and that goes from four to infinity. So this has, uh, you can see that each piece of the domain is associated with a piece of the graph. So it makes sense that there's three pieces and three intervals. And then the range, if you wanna pause it and try it, that would be good. Remember for domain and range, you start with the lowest number and you're working your way up. So if you're looking at the graph, you wanna start at the bottom of the graph and work your way up when you're looking at the three pieces. So this one was a little tricky because of this piece here. But if we're looking at the y axis and the graphing that is associated with the y axis, this goes from negative infinity on the y axis all the way up until negative one. And I kind of paused here because I thought, oh, do I need to do another break there? But since we have, if I were to write this point zero, negative two, one, negative two, two, negative two, three, negative two, we should be safe there for the range. And then there's another break here and then our range starts at positive two. So that covers interval notation for domain and range. So that's all I have for this video. Um, if you have any questions or need any help, please reach out to me and I would be happy to be there for you. See y'all in the next one.